is Lauren White, writer for SciTech Discovery Center, and I want to wish you a happy National Moth Week. Now, most people just think of the moth as the drab or boring cousin of the butterfly. However, that diminishes just how important they are to our ecosystem. There are about 11,000 different species of moths, and they outnumber the butterfly 10 to 1. They also provide food for about 95% of the birds here in the U.S. Because of this, moths have evolved in a variety of ways to try and evade their large amount of predators. Sometimes they look like other less delicious insects, parts of plants, or even bird droppings. They also come in a variety of sizes, from the size of a tip of a pencil to the atlas moth from Southeast Asia with a wingspan of 12 inches. Most moths are actually nocturnal, meaning they are more active at night. Due to this, most of the flowers they pollinate are large and have white blooms because it is easier for the moth to see. Without the moth, the world around us would be a very different place. We are now going to take the opportunity to use our digital microscope to take a close-up look of a species of moth that is native to the DFW area. This polyphemus moth, a member of the giant silk moth family, we could tell it's a male because of its larger antennas. Moths are insects, just like butterflies, but have shorter, wider bodies. The hair on their bodies helps carry pollen. The polyphemus moth is named after the markings on its wings, which look like eyes. Therefore, they are named after the mythical Greek cyclops, Polymethus. The moth uses these eyes to mimic owl eyes and confuse predators. Now that we know how amazing moths can be and how interesting they are to observe, I'm going to show you something you can do that will bring the moths to you. Now we are going to make a moth feeder. So what I have is an old tennis ball. I have a container large enough to fit the tennis ball in. Some string. I have a string stick. Some juice. You can use any kind of juice you want. You want more sugar in it though. And then I have sugar itself. You can use white or brown. Now, I also have some extremely hot water, so I'm going to put that in my container, and I just need to make sure that it's about enough to cover my tennis ball. So once I have the hot water in there, remember, if you're younger, you're going to want an adult to help you with anything like hot water. I'm going to start putting some sugar in there. Now, I'm going to put as much sugar as I can get to dissolve. So I can put it in and then I'm going to use my stirring stick to start stirring it up. Remember, be careful of the hot water. So I'm going to stir, 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 and that's dissolving pretty well. So I want a lot of sugar because moths are going to be very attracted to that. And I want some moths to come around my porch so that way I can make my own observations about them. So I'm going to get that in there and just keep stirring. If you end up putting more sugar and it doesn't all dissolve in, that's perfectly fine because the most important thing is to make sure you have enough sugary water that it is going to absorb into our tennis ball so that the moss will be able to sense it. This is kind of like flower nectar where it's very sweet to them. It's similar to a hummingbird feeder. We're just going to keep doing this. Now it's really interesting to have something like this out because you'll be able to see moths both during the day and at night. Now moths are really interesting to observe at night because of how they are attracted to certain lights. Moths actually use the light of the moon to navigate and people don't understand why they're so confused by things like lanterns and street lights. The reason for this is that because of the way that it reflects in their eyes, they get very confused and will continuously fly around it until eventually they are trapped. But traveling by moonlight can be a little confusing for everybody. Keep getting it in there. Remember, the more sugar, the better. Getting nice and cloudy, got lots of sugar in here into my syrupy water. 
And once I have that nice and stirred in, I am just going to gently place my tennis ball in there. So, and just push it down, and I'm going to let it soak in there for a while. Now the sugar itself could possibly attract some moths, but because they are so interested in flowers, I'm going to use my fruit juice because that will help attract them. So you're going to want to put about a tablespoon of this in there. Let me use my spoon. I'm just going to slowly pour that over that. And because the juice is so sugary, it puts off a large amount of scent. I'm just going to soak my tennis ball. And I'm actually going to leave that overnight. Once I am finished, I can use my string to tie around it. And then, voila, you have a beautiful moth feeder. Thank you for watching. Please follow us here for more fun science videos or our Facebook and Instagram to stay up to speed with more great activities.